Hey, the Rulers DM073 here showing you a showdown game between Christian Mix on Discard Loki versus myself on Esper Blue White Black High Ninjas. Let's go ahead and jump right in. This lesson brought to you by Odyssey Games for pre-orders and sealed product, CCG Prime for tons of singles and supplies, Cardo Doco for international rulers looking for product, and FoulLibrary.com for articles and wonderful deck lists. As well as our guest lecturer members, Vite Ramen, King Pearl Shine, and Mog Knight. Class is in session. So as we get started here, just as a kind of a heads up, so this is just going to be one game because it took us pretty much the entire round of our locals to be able to play this one game. Uh, so that gives you a hint of what you're sitting in for. We have Christian Mix on the left playing Discard Order Loki. I'm using some of the cool new tools um, that have been made available to make kind of order decks more consistent and just kind of give them some new um, flexibilities. And on the right, we're playing Blue, White, Black, Ninjas, um, kind of a mid-rangey control-ish version rather than the super aggressive versions that we've seen before. Um, just something to have a little bit more counterplay and a little bit better protection as opposed to um, just trying to go all in super quick uh, as we may have seen in the past. And just kind of having some interaction that's not just hard destruction. Um, one of the things that we noticed when we were playing Hyde the first time is that a lot of Hyde's kills with the ninjas is just hard kills. So you don't have a lot of like replacements. You don't have a lot of um, disruption or, or things like that in terms of her natural suite. So how you're going to... Um, make that work other places uh to be able to find closure in games and maybe get a little bit more grindy or have some protection can be a little bit tricky which gave birth to this list um this was kind of based off of the list that was played by the seven kings of the land over in uh, spain so we do want to thank them for that um, but it is our kind of twist on it so let's go ahead and jump right in we are going to be on the play with ninjas right off the bat as is very similar with many high decks because we want to be able to potentially see Iga into contract early if possible is we're going to go ahead and use X the Black Cat's um, God's Art here just right off the bat we do see an Iga there we already have one in hand I believe but um, seeing the contract is like a pretty immediate let's set that face down because we want to be able to set up for that setting up our three zones there and then passing this here. You'll notice I put it in the outside the game zone portion of the play mat. We really use that to represent like outside the game or EX area based on kind of like which deck it's using. Um, so that's just why that's there. So we have the three zones and we pass the turnover to Christian who's going to potentially one of the cool tools that order decks have gotten uh, specifically this works really well for loki is prototype magi trooper zeus has toyed around with this a lot um, but it's a little bit unfortunate for zeus because he doesn't have a way to unorder it whereas loki always can unorder it because it can just shoot itself um, so prototype magi trooper is actually a very good um, card here for um, Loki to be able to order with. At the end of his turn, just to kind of set up a few things, we're going to go ahead and do our tracker. And the reason why we're doing our tracker here is because we don't want to walk into a world where maybe during our turn he goes, um, Loki answers the game of gods, make black, kill prototype magic trooper, play Schmel. Like we want to kill it on the turn that he already has ordered, so it makes the cost for Schmel a lot cheaper. Um, so just using our tracker there to set it face down and do that minus six to really help get that off the board. From there, we are going to um, put a card face down, leave ourselves with one will open of interaction. Or no, sorry, we're just going to leave our two stones up. Our tracker goes to the graveyard. And there's, like you see, there's that Loki enters the game of gods, right? So there's really a moment where that could have happened, which could have been pretty bad uh, for us. We are going to see a Volmol come out here. During our turn, get to draw him three cards which is huge. Both of these decks are going to have a lot of hand advantage opportunities, um, particularly the flip of the the contract, if at all possible, um, can be pretty uh, huge to just put a bunch of cards face down and then draw a bunch of cards. You also see things like Glowing Spider and stuff like that. So it is going to be a battle of can I keep my hand filled? Uh, and the discard Loki obviously wants to get me down low, but um, having a second hand, quote unquote, in the terms of the face down cards, as well as cards like Glowing Spider, can make that pretty tricky. So it'll be interesting to see how this match plays out, or this game plays out. After Calling Stone. Does decide to swing in for four, and we say, yeah, we can't really stop your snake, so I guess we'll take 400 damage. Then at the very end of his turn, we're going to try to put a card face down. 
and then immediately cast it. We're going to go ahead and flip up the Rusty's Fox here. Only costs us one. We're just playing it from the face down area to draw a card and put a card face down. The advantage here, I mean, it doesn't really matter either way. Like I could have just cast it. The only advantage for putting it face down would be if he had something else for me to flip face up, shoot with Rusty's Fox and then cast it. Ultimately, though, I just kind of wanted to be a little fancy. Um, and so we have a Rusty's Fox out on field. And we say that is fine. Um, let him move to discard it at the end of turn. He's got too many cards in his hand. You see a Wind of Zeus and a Loki's Curse. Loki's Curse is an excellent card for him to discard because it's just going to come right back to his hand, um, which is pretty good for Christian, keeping that hand advantage. You see, look, we'll call stone and you're going to hit us for five. So we're or four. So we're going to hit you for five. Uh, that means that if we're both just going to play these one cards, might have a slight advantage in the fact that mine is 100 damage more to you at a time. Um, committing to a we don't have access to eager right now. So just a regular cast of rocket dive. Uh, this is going to um, expand our zone by one. So we'll go up to four and then try to uh, go into contract. And he says, yeah, that's fine. We can't do anything about it. Um, so secret pink spider is going to come in here and attempt to make my zone five. Let me put three cards face down, draw three cards. Um, so we'll have to see what happens here for Christian in response to that. Interesting thing about Hyde is the fact that she has 1100 defense. So Schmel does those like minus tens to the board. Um, and it won't uh, it'll make Pink Spider not be able to damage anything, but not be able to die, which is a little bit weird. And we do see a Loki's Deception to gain control of the Enter ability. Um, and so he's going to get to expand his EX zone by one. He doesn't have an EX zone, um, so it just essentially will fizzle. But it does stop me from being able to put any cards into my EX area and draw those cards. So a very good play here from Christian. Now I do need to try to find a way to shoot my own pink spider to recontract essentially later because the way it works is pink spider can't put cards into the EX area. She can just cast them. Um, so it doesn't help us very much in that regard. Then move to recovery. Grabbing another ethereal stone. It might be about time to start thinking about going for a Schmel line if he's got one and which but it might also be worth just kind of waiting to be able to burn the will for Volmold during my recovery during his recovery phase so that he has more will to be able to play with because if he paid one um, for Volmold right now and then paid one to order he'd only have one stone going into my turn which is not super great. Um, see a call stone. Attempt to swing in for that 800. Blocks with an Eternal Snake, which makes a lot of sense. Bane, drain, drain don't, or Bane doesn't do anything, but we are going to take advantage of the Drain. We're going to get that 800 life, and then we are going to swing in with our Fox. Um, so we get to go down to um, the uh, 35 or 3,000. We are just going to play a Rusty's Fox here. It looks saying, look, you're not going to let us put cards face down our own way. So we're going to go ahead and put cards face down the way we want to, um, which is using Rusty's Fox. Um, is, thankfully that we still have that tool available to us, even though Pink Spider has slipped. Uh, and then we'll just pass the turn. Wondering if we'll see kind of some up stuff before upkeep here. As he's already drawn for turn, I do think he's missed the trigger for Loki's Curse this turn. But he is going to just get to keep bringing it back to his hand every single turn as long as it sits in Graveyard. So once he remembers that it's not a huge loss. Volmo is going to go ahead and use its ability, I think, to remove Pink Spider's ability for the turn. So I can't cast anything from my EX areas right now. Um, and his Volmol is officially tiny. He's probably going to recover Call Stone with the Volmol first um, so that he has four will um, before he makes any kind of plays. Um, there is a world where if we had some kind of spot removal, 
right now in terms of like maybe another Rusty's Fox or a high or a Rusty itself um, to be able to shoot the Volmo before recovery now that it doesn't have its eternal so that if he wants a stone, he has to call it. Um, but there's really not a huge value either way. It's either he pays one to order whatever he wants to order and then call stone or we let him recover, um, call a stone and then kill it and then reorder. It's it's one stone either way and he ends with three stones at the end of it so as expected we are going to see our first smell can discard a few cards is that kunai throw um we could use that kunai throw to throw and reset our own pink spider i think we're choosing not to right now because of the fact that like our ex zone is pretty full anyway and we're waiting kind of until we have another rocket dive to make use of um we have good cards that are face down we can use them as needed um and we don't have a glowing spider either so like it it's better for us to just kind of sit on the threat of a pink spider um, and see what he does Do we see a glowing spider right there, which is pretty helpful? <laughs> um, certainly going to help us dig a little bit. Calling a stone, hitting a cat moon. So up to five stones now. Going to ship that to the bottom, saying that. It's not a very good card for us right have right now. Swinging in for eight um, with Bane and Drain. Thinking this is probably not going to get blocked, in all honesty. Um, it, because he doesn't want... In the same vein, like Rust, uh, Christian's already picked up on the fact that he doesn't want my pink spider to get like killed. Um because then it resets me to be able to do other stuff and so there's an advantage to him uh, a, a slight advantage in the sense of just like letting pink spider go through because if he blocks with the smell pink spider will most certainly die uh, even with bane and drain so we'd trade and then i'd have a neg 10 but i'd still be able to get back access to um, my stuff um, so we're gonna go ahead and take uh, the swing for eight he blocks one of the foxes with smell we swing for five we flip up the whistling summoning to buy back that rusty's fox for later again we're trying to find ways to be able to keep filling the ex area when we don't have abilities to put it face down uh, and we'll just pass Going into Christian's turn, but for recovery, we're going to see a Lucifer. Uh, in response to that, we're going to say, hey, well, let's see what else you've got in your hand here. Let's go ahead and say, look, you're going to try to do this. You're going to do a life loss thing. You're going to maybe make me discard. Let's see if we can kind of get rid of some of your hands too. Loki's Insight, wonderful card to come back into the environment just to be able to um, disrupt decks that like to hold open a bunch of will. Knowing it's probably unlikely that this tech has any form of cancels outside of that Wind of Zeus and certainly doesn't have the will to pay for it right now. If he does have other quick cast cards in his hand, we're going to be able to rip some cool stuff. And boy, does he have a lot. We're going to get rid of the other Deception because he's just been able to keep his hands so full of cards. And we'll get rid of one of the Loki enters the Game of Gods. Um, the idea to the Deception is like if I get another Pink Spider, I don't want him to just like steal the Enter effect again. Or if I play Glowing Spider... Um, steal my draw power or whatever that that's a pretty devastating piece for for this deck to, to run out on so life total swing there go down to 22 and 47 because of the 500 loss and 500 gain going into the main phase there's a world where we probably just swing smell into the fox just to get rid of it And he says, yeah, that's fine. We, we'll, we'll take that. We're going to probably play another fox here in a second anyway. So we're in the same boat we were in before. He just passes the turn. 
and exactly like I said, there comes down to the Rusty's Fox. We have a second Whistling Summoning in hand, so there's a world where maybe we put the Whistling Summoning there. Ultimately, though, we top decked another Rusty's Fox, so that's what we're going to grab, mainly because that gives us a free for spot removal if we need it um, to be able to push through some, some damage this turn and start to get ourselves close to finding that lethal. 22 is not a lot of life to go through. Um, he does have a way to do the stat nank, um, but overall, it's not a huge deal. Like We're kind of advantaged here in terms of even through the stat negations um of schmel we're still putting in some good pressure like we're not hurting him but we're making him burn through resources so swinging in with pink spider for eight we are going to see the schmel discard or smell kill in response to that we're going to go ahead and flash in ega hard casting the ega and then we're going to go ahead and let the schmel die it's going to attempt to apply a neg thousand neg thousand which is going to kill rusty's fox and lucifer forcing me to discard a second card but in response to the stat neg though a card that i really like in this matchup um, but also just in general for this deck because especially dealing with the mirrors it can be really annoying so we're going to go ahead and play a Awakening of zero to give everything I, oh, J slash resonators I control eternal until the end of turn. Um, the thought being here is that, look, they'll go down to being zero zeros, but they have eternal, so they don't die. Uh, and because I'm going to discard a card from Lucifer, it takes me down to just one card in hand, but that one card in hand is pink spider, or is a glowing spider, which is going to draw me four cards here. Um, so we're going to get to draw four cards, but the pink spi the spider, the spider is also going to be a 12-12, um, and we can just draw draw four cards and refill our hand after being you know kind of discarded out does look like we're gonna see maybe some kind of play to try to stop the glowing spider Loki enters the game of gods, probably to try to be able to quick cast in a Volmul to just like really dig deep. Um, before he goes into the Volmul, though, he'll have to make sure to float green uh, for the um, Wind of Zeus, which he doesn't super mind right now um, because this is happening during my turn. Um, so it's not a big deal um, if he has if he doesn't hit Wind of Zeus and it just kind of has to fall off because I'm probably not going to be swinging from I'm not swinging for anything else this turn because there's a minus 1000 on the board so nothing has attack to be able to hit him um, but if he doesn't miss and this pink spider or this glowing spider resolves then like the the will is kind of like meh well I was going into my turn anyway for recovery so it's not a, it's not a big deal so it's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing floating green for the Wind of Zeus that he's hoping to draw. We do see a Volmol come in here. Go one, two, three. And we'll see if I reach for the main deck to be allowed to draw four more cards. does have a quick cast prototype magi trooper because again all of his resonators for the whole turn have quick cast uh, ironically enough immediately dies so if he has another one it could also draw him even deeper um which is very neat um so but doesn't see it unfortunately so we do get to not only hit uh the glowing spider on field which is currently a 12th delve but we also have to draw four cards as you see there we do see another contract um so we are probably in a position where we might be trying to go for a pink spider like suicide um or or kill it myself so that we can then um reflip with another contract uh and kind of refill there that being said i mean the zone's at four i've got a lot of card value already out of it i've got my hand filled i've got cards face down trying to go for the contract isn't super huge right now if anything it's trying to like keep his board clear but most of the time loki usually plays just one thing at a time anyway and it's usually a j ruler so it doesn't super matter um at the end of the turn he's going to go ahead and do roar of the underground giant um to try to bring schmell back to his hands and put the ega back into my hand and i go well in response then i'll use the will to cast this rusty's fox that i put face down um for one uh, and then sure this ega goes back to my hand so really just trying to keep the board as established as possible um to really narrow what christian has and say look you're on a clock um right now you're represented with there is lethal represented on board this turn and he just played a um 
Vomo. And we actually see Stone throwing my turn. He's like, well, I've had a J ruler die. I can't order it, sure, but I will play this Schmel. Um, and so if the Schmel gets killed for any reason, there's a Neg 10, Neg 10 to the board. Um, so keeps him in a way to be able to um, control what's going on. Minus a thousand attack really does hurt. Um, I have two things now that can survive through a Schmel, being Pink Spider who can't hit, and then Glowing Spider who, as long as I keep four cards in my face down, can hit for two. So we can really start to start grinding Christian down a little bit. Christian kind of seeing what he wants to do here. Um, does go a Call of Darkness. This is great to just grab him another Schmel. The biggest problem here is, that, oh, he does decide to grab a, sh a Underground Giant and a Dracula. That's very interesting to me. Um, one of the biggest things about this right now is that, like, Christian's doing a really good job of kind of grinding my resources out i guess and, or sorry i guess more so that christian's doing a really good job of of preventing me from killing him but christian's not really moving towards winning the game um and the longer this goes the more tools i'll have especially as i continue to kind of keep a hand filled so you got a rusty in there i've got another um awakening of zero i've got the ego that we can make use of it's just this piece of can he start applying pressure to me as opposed to stealing momentum from me like because he's not really putting in much here does go decide to play the arena but he hasn't had a j ruler die this turn so it still costs full price and not not um not unexpectedly um or not ex Yes, not unexpectedly, um, does not decide to commit three will to play Arena Expansion Utgard right now. Uses the Volmol ability to turn off Pink Spider. Although he might be targeting um, the other spider instead to make it so that when he plays this Lucifer, it actually kills her. This Dracula, it actually kills it. Retains priority after having the effect of Loki resolve. And yes, does seem like we're gonna see that order Dracula come down, killing the spider um, because of it no longer having its ability to get buffed, does get to draw him into a card. Count Dracula putting in work. Figuring out what he wants to do with these last two will. Does decide, oh, sorry, a two will after playing the Utgard Loki. Um, does decide to go down for it. And we just go in response. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do Awakening of Zero. Uh, and then what we're going to do, so that resolves. And then we're gonna do Rusty to kill the Schmel. Rusty's gonna kill the Schmel which would then apply a neg 10 neg 10 to the board which will then also kill his dracula so i get two birds with one stone kind of thing and keeping my board alive and keeping his field clear reason why we want to do this is again we want those things dead before utgard comes into play so he just doesn't get suddenly a 20 20 beater um and we just don't want to deal with that And at this point in time, if he wants to try to go for another Schmel, he really needs to have access to a Loki enters the game of gods, which we've already seen three. So it seems unlikely that he has the fourth. So we're feeling pretty comfortable about our ability to be able to push in some damage here. This is going to be 18 off of the foxes. Something like a Duet of Light would have been great here, but we just don't have one of those in this deck.
are going to see a at the very end of his turn a flash in of an ega to be able to get out a glowing spider this is so that we can find that extra damage that we need and as well as refill our hand or you know what's going to happen is that he does have another zeus enters uh, or essence of zeus to cancel this uh, but that's okay because at that point in time we've gotten a pretty open field um and he's tapped out so it does let it happen we're gonna draw three cards and then e at the end of the turn is gonna go back to the bottom of the the area, the EX area. So now we have a 12-12 spider. Does have to discard due to hand size at end of turn. You see he has that Loki's Curse. Interesting choice to discard Loki's Curse for sure. Would have thought that would have we would have tried to use that to save our lives a little bit. Currently threatening 1,200 damage with the uh, glowing spider. Trying to take him down to 10. And at that point in time, any two swings from any of our stuff is lethal. We do have a Loki's Insight. Could have probably gone for that before recup before we started to push in um, which would have been smart now this is where uh reading the card explains the card uh water mage of maat i even pick it up it does not have quick cast uh, he orders this card during my turn uh, to try to bottom deck it. It does not have quick cast. This card does not. Uh, and we, we're not thinking about Loki's enters the game of gods. Kind of go back to what I said last turn of like, oh, if the only thing you have that at this point is Loki enters the game of gods, we're good to go. I just, in looking at Water Mage of Ott, completely forgot that it does have, not have quick cast. Uh, and so let him bottom deck my spider. Um, at that point in time, um, he's going to let one of the foxes go through blocks with the second fox to block Water Mage of Ott and draw a card starts to try to block with water mage of Maat. we're gonna reveal the ega to play the r tracker to apply a neg seven neg seven to his board state to kill the guy so that the 5-5 five five can go through. Take him down to 12. He'll draw another card there. He's going to go ahead and Loki's Curse. The Pink Spider. So we do take him down to 12. The only real change to that turn would have been if he had not had the order, he still probably dies. Well, he tapped, he only takes a thousand. So he taps down the pink, the glowing spider and the uh, pink, pink spider and still takes 10. So like the end result is kind of the same. And the only difference is like he has more cards in his hand now because, and I have one less blocker uh, or one less kind of thing to be able to put pressure on. After draw before recovery on his turn though, now that he's missed the opportunity to pull back any Loki's curses because he's already drawn for turn, we're going to go ahead and start stealing stuff from his hand. So we're going to hit um, the uh, Bounce, uh, Floor of the Underground Giant, and the Lucifer. Uh, and then we're just going to go ahead and let the Ega fade away. We're not even going to... We're going to choose to send it to the graveyard as opposed to putting it face down. Um, and we're going to say, cool, you have a handful of stuff. You have another Jade Ruler die. We feel pretty comfortable right now. There's no Loki enters the game of gods there. Um, there's only non-quick cast resonators in there. Um, feeling pretty, pretty good about our ability to try to close out this game. Um, obviously, the Schmel is a problem. You know, he can pay a full four to order it. Um, and we don't really have a way to protect it. We do have Whistling Summoning, which is helpful. But, like, we don't play stuff with swiftness. Um, and so it's a little bit risky. Um, and we need, like, hard spot removal. Having access to those rusty foxes right now would be really great. Or like a second whistling summoning face down. Even a kunai throw to kill our own pink spider might be helpful as well. So we can start putting cards face down. We're just going to see a hard cast of that schmell. We go, you know what? We'll discard two cards. Sure, that's fine. We discard a contract and a rusty. 
call a stone and 4c1. The Rusty just hasn't been super great. I mean, it can only target... Um, one thing to note about Rusty is that it can only target your opponent's stuff. Um, and so, like, there is a world here where this next turn, like the end of this turn, we try to go into the Rusty. Um, we're going to go ahead and cast the Ega uh, and then use two more to cast a second... Uh, oh, no, there is the Rusty's Fox. So we're going to draw a card, put a card face down. I do see a Kunai throw there. Um... We're going to go ahead and just then cast the Glowing Spider that we hit off of the Rusty Toad. Like, we're really just trying to dig a bunch of cards, knowing full well that it's very unlikely that um, we're going to get any damage through next turn, because all he has to do is just, like, kill Schmel, uh, and we don't have a way. We do have the Kunai throw here, which could be pretty helpful to, like, try to get the Glowing Spider to resolve, um, but... We just need to kind of burn through this Schmel. Uh, another Awakening of Zero is probably not likely. Um, at this point, we're going to go ahead and swing in for the eights. Seeing if we can get some damage in there. Does decide to pop his own Schmel, which is going to just kill everything off the board other than Pink Spider, and he'll take zero damage. But we do have a lot of cool resources. Now, keep in mind, we probably could have used um water moon child there to try to save the glowing spider or save a rusty's fox or something um, rusty's fox could have been really helpful for that black triad you see we're only playing a couple copies of that black triad we're gonna do kunai throw here to finally kill our own pink spider um, seeing if he might try to save us from killing our own pink spider we know he has that zeus uh essence of zeus and yeah that's gonna happen so he does decide to go ahead and say we're gonna cancel it we're going to attempt to anyway, but a card we've been saving for quite a bit because we can filter into blue is Fiola. So Fiola was going to immediately die, going to send the Essence of Zeus or the Wind of Zeus to the bottom of the deck, uh, which means our Kunai throw resolves, which means we kill Pink Spider, which means now we have access to being able to put cards face down whenever we want, um, which is pretty huge, especially since we know he's playing Schmel. So it's just like, well, you're going to discard my cards anyway. I might as well put them face down so they don't get discarded. This really is turning out to be a pretty unique matchup between these two games, uh, two decks really kind of playing off of each other. Um, Christian doing a great job of kind of keeping the damage to a minimum at this point through the use of those Schmels. Um, but he's still, again, the life total is 1,200 to 47. Like he, he has to actually start doing damage to me uh, and I'm, I'm constantly making him kill the addition during my turn or kill his ruler during my turn, which means he doesn't get a good opportunity to use... Um, he doesn't get a good opportunity to use the uh, Utgard to hit me for damage. Roar the Underground Giant got top decked. I'm going to try to put my Ega back into my hand uh, and then bring a Giant back to his hand. What we're going to do is put a card face down in response. And then also, before that resolves, we're going to say, you know what? Why don't we Black Triad? Why don't you discard two cards, please? You're not the only one who can make a person discard two cards does discard a uh, underground giant and another wind of Zeus this is then gonna get bounced back to my hand this is before recovery keep that in mind so tapping it for will really wouldn't help and at this point in time the EX area is completely revealed has not had a J ruler die this turn goes for a call of darkness do not have anything to be able to stop that. Have not seen my Witch of the Fallen Kingdoms in this deck as of yet. Gets a Mavulmul, and there's no other giants for him to grab at this point. Really going to refill his hand here. Both of us sitting on a good stockpile of cards. Orders the Volmol out. I go in response to the Volmol's enter effect. We're going to try to put a card face down and then reveal the Ega. 
and then use the Iga to play a glowing spider. So before he has access to a bunch of cards, we're gonna try to play something that draws us more cards. Um, let him draw his three cards. You see the one card left in hand there was a Schmel. Uh, does draw into a Wind of Zeus, so very glad that we did that when he did. Calls another stone, um, and then the spider's gonna be an 8-8 on our turn, which is very nice. Iga goes to the bottom of the deck or back into the face down area. So now glowing spiders in 8-8. This is a good position again for that water moon child to be able to bounce the glowing spider back to my hand and recast it. Um, if we need to, now that we have three cards face down, can get to four cards face down. Um, you know that we do have that rusty in hand that we were using before. We're going to start by just, let's say, swing for eight. Um, see if we get some value off of it. He's going to use um, Volmo's ability here to try to... Um, Remove its abilities and then block, so they trade. I'm gonna use Water Moon Child to put it back in my hand, finally using that to kind of save it. Um, and we start to go at him for nine, then we change our mind and we say, let's go after Volmol, which is a terrible play here. Um, he wants to be able to kill it anyway. We want our initial attack target to be him. There's no way possible that he's not just going to kill his Volmol with his own Loki ability first, and we're just gonna whiff the attack. like. That was worthless. We missed out on three damage there really bad. Um, or nine damage. We could have put him down to three life, um, which would have been great. And sure, now he has the giant. Um, we're going to go ahead and just cast a v an Ega, cast a second Ega from face down um, to have that extra will available. Um, and then probably put at least a couple, maybe one if not two cards face down just to get him out of the way. Um, and then... Uh, cast use one of them to cast the glowing spider and in response to glowing spider's effects we're going to put another card face down here um we're going to attempt see if we could draw through both players and he does let it happen so we just draw get to draw four cards you do see there is the witch of the fallen kingdom a couple of them as well as a couple contracts which is pretty helpful contracts not super great here other than the fact that like when he reanimates his addition um if he does we can force him to banish it so we just don't even have to deal with that threat at all because we're probably not using it to expand the ex area at this point running out of cards in deck for both decks we've both done a lot of drawing me with glowing spider and him with volmo and as well as he's done a lot of searching with like call of darkness and stuff goes into an ordered water mage of ma'at this lets him tuck one of the egas as well as the glowing spider to the bottom of the deck um, which is i mean helpful because it means that i'm less likely to deck out um but also oh he does decide to grab the black triad instead it's a very interesting choice I feel like I probably would have gone for the glowing spider just in general. Kind of double checking what's in graveyard to see how many Volmols I've already answered. Or sorry, Schmels I've already answered. I believe at this point it's three, but he's been recycling them with the uh, Roar of the Underground Giant. Really good card for this deck. Especially since I am playing an addition. So he has like other stuff to be able to target, which is nice. Question becomes, what is this water mage gonna do for him? Does call his last stone. Didn't expect to see a, a game go to 10 stones, did ya? And then just ships the turn there. We are gonna go ahead and use the floating wheel from the Iga he got rid of and one more and one more to go ahead and play Rusty. We are going to do Rusty's, uh, to shoot that guy out of the way. And he says, yeah, sure, that's fine. Um, draws from that thing dying and then I'm gonna go into my turn we move to recovery I'm trying to find lethal this turn I have enough damage represented on board to be able to be lethal uh, if I had a way to expand the EX zone I could potentially make it lethal even more so um, but we're gonna just go ahead and go in for 1200 or sorry go in for 800 see if he lets that through probably not in all honesty Probably going to get disrupted somehow, which is okay. Does Roar of the Underground Giant to put it back in my hand, and he can recycle the Schmel. Although, yeah. doesn't. It's not great for him to put it back in my hand because it is going to draw me some cards, but um, 
makes sense to not take the damage. Rusty getting in there, taking him down to two. If I was playing Pumpkin Witch in the sideboard, you would see me slam that Witch of the Fallen Kingdom to go for it, but this deck is not playing Pumpkin Witch in the sideboard, um, which is a fool. Uh, silly mistake to do. I just didn't feel like it fit, fit the theme of what the deck was trying to do, uh, and so I just didn't put... Um, and I've never really had situations like this where I've been so close to 200 damage. Um, Sealed One-Eyed would also be really good here just to be able to end the game right where it is. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and pass the turn with a full grip of cards. Goes for a Call of Darkness here. I go, no, I finally found them. Here's Witch of the Fallen Kingdom. We're not going to let you search. Like, we're both running low on cards, but clearly the cards that are in your hand are not super great, and I want to win the game. At this point in time, we're probably going to see a hard cast ordered Schmel, which is pretty good. One for the Call of Darkness, just trying to figure out exactly how he wants to play this Schmel. What will does he want to leave up, knowing that if he gets ordered, if he orders the Schmel, it'll be just Darkness Stones um, for those uh, Adaractius Memoria. Does decide to just leave up those Adaractius Memoria for a Schmel here. Uh, gonna make me discard two cards. We're gonna go ahead and take advantage and put a card face down and then discard two cards here. We're gonna get rid of two more, which of the Fallen Kingdoms. Like, look, hey, we stopped the search when we needed to. Um, so we'll just pass the turn there. Um, gonna go in for one. We're gonna see a pink sp uh, flashing spider. We're gonna draw four more cards. And at the end of his turn, we're going to go ahead and try to do Loki's Insight as well, just to be like, look, I've got all this will. We're going into my turn. Let's have the most knowledge possible before I try to make any kind of move. We do see a Wind of Zeus come down to cancel that. And we're like, okay, well, that did what we needed it to do. I got rid of one card, leaving you with just two in hand. Um, and so still with four cards here. Gonna go ahead and play Whistling Summoning to try to reanimate uh, a Rusty. This is wrong to do with this sequence. Um, Rusty, I should have absolutely just uh, just paid one to flip Rusty face up uh, and shoot it as opposed to trying to summon it in because I don't have um, a way to give my stuff barrier. Um, and so like I needed or eternal <laughs> um so i'm banking on the fact that i'm going to try to put two cards face down here um to uh make pink spider just be big enough to not die um because the rusties themselves are just going to get killed immediately by the schmells stat neg Christian thinking about what he wants to do here. If there's any kind of response. Does look like he has a Loki's Deception in hand, which is probably why the Loki's Insight came down. And is also one of the reasons why trying to go for just like the hard cast of Rusty was a mistake. Uh, because if he had, you know, responded to this with Loki's Deception or something else like that, we would still have the Rusty to be able to make use of. Um, before the Schmel's Enter effect goes on the chase, to or effect to give minus two, minus two, we're just going to slam two cards face down using Hide. So we're going to lose the Rusties, and then we have the um, 
Pink Spider, and this is Christian <coughs> kind of realizing his mistake here, um, is that if he had used, in response to Rusty targeting him, he could have, um, he could have changed the target, essentially, um, by using uh, Loki's deception to try to redirect it. Um, but unfortunately, that is it. The pink spider is going to, or the glowing spider is finally going to get to find the lethal, and there is the game. Deck profiles for both of these lists will be up later this week. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, this is DMO73 saying, class dismissed.